You know that saying, good things take time? Well, if that's true, Aptera might just be building one of the greatest things ever made on wheels. It's been a while since I last talked about Aptera, and that's not because I stopped caring. It's because things behind the scenes got complicated. Not in a bad way, but in a necessary one. For months, most of the conversation around Aptera has been less about the car itself and more about the stock, the funding, and where investors' shares were going. That's not really what I like to focus on. I care about the vehicles, the innovation, and the future of transportation. Not stock tickers, but sometimes the two worlds collide. And today, they have, because Aptera just executed a $75 million equity line of credit. And this move could be the turning point that takes the company from dream to reality. Let's be honest, people are tired of waiting. Some are skeptical, others frustrated, and a lot of us have wondered, what's taking so long? Aptera isn't struggling because of bad design or lack of demand. The technology is brilliant. The design is complete. The solar integration is revolutionary. What's been missing is the money to actually build it all at scale. And now, after months of silence, we finally know why Aptera went quiet and how they plan to move forward. Aptera has secured an equity line of credit, ELOC, from New Circle Capital, a financial agreement that allows them to raise up to $75 million when needed. Think of it as a safety net that turns into a faucet. They can turn on the tap and draw funds when needed. $5 million here, $10 million there, depending on what part of production or tooling they're working on. This setup is smart. It means they don't have to take the full amount all at once. They can take what they need, when they need it, without burning through everything up front. But here's the key detail. This ELOC is only possible because Aptera is going public through a direct listing on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol SFV. That's the bridge between silence and progress. Aptera had to complete the regulatory process before this funding pipeline could even open. For months, people were asking, why isn't Aptera saying anything? Why no updates? Well, they were under the watchful eye of the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission. When a company is preparing to go public, everything it says publicly can influence investor perception. Staying quiet isn't just smart, it's required. Aptera wasn't ignoring its fans, it was protecting its future. That's why there were fewer updates and fewer behind the scenes reveals. The company was focused on approval first, announcements later. And now that the green light has been given, the money can finally start flowing. With the ELOC active, Aptera can start raising capital for the next phase, production. That includes casting equipment, tooling, and manufacturing setup. All the heavy-duty work that turns prototypes into actual, drivable vehicles. They've said they need about $60 million to begin production. So $75 million gives them a little breathing room to move beyond that first phase and into deliveries. Of course, this isn't free money. The shares act as collateral which means Aptera's stock value matters a lot. If the stock price holds strong, they can raise more. If it drops, it limits what they can access. It's a balancing act, and it shows just how tight the EV capital market has become. Now, some people might say, isn't debt risky? Sure, but what's the alternative? Aptera spent years searching for a major investor. A big-name backer like Rivian and Lucid managed to attract. Lucid got billions from Saudi Arabia's public investment fund. Rivian had Amazon and Ford. Those companies weren't profitable when they started. They just had enormous checkbooks behind them. Aptera doesn't have a billionaire fairy godparent. What it does have is one of the most passionate, community-driven fan bases in EV history. 
Tens of thousands of people have backed the company through crowdfunding, and that grassroots support has carried them further than anyone expected. So this $75 million credit line isn't perfect, but it's clever. It keeps control in Aptera's hands, rewards the loyal supporters who stuck around, and most importantly, gets them closer to having actual vehicles on the road. When people compare Aptera to Rivian or Lucid, it's like comparing a marathon runner to a sprinter. They're running completely different races. Lucid depends on ultra-luxury sedans with huge margins and massive capital. Rivian leans on trucks and SUVs backed by Amazon's logistics ecosystem. Aptera's mission is different. They're trying to build the most efficient vehicle ever made. A solar electric car that can charge itself using sunlight. That's not just a different business model. It's a completely different philosophy. Aptera's cars are light, aerodynamic, and designed for people who want freedom from charging networks. They're for people who see the future not as another subscription, but as independence. Rivian and Lucid are building impressive machines, but Aptera is building an idea. So why hasn't Aptera landed a billionaire investor yet? The answer might surprise you. It's because Aptera's business model is too customer friendly. They're building a car that charges itself from sunlight, requires minimal maintenance, supports right to repair, and works with your phone instead of locking you into a paid ecosystem. That's amazing for consumers, but from an investor's standpoint, it's harder to see recurring revenue. Lucid and Rivian make money from software subscriptions, connectivity packages, and branded charging networks. Aptera's product is so efficient that it practically stops you from spending more money after you buy it. It's brilliant innovation, but it's not the infinite upsell model investors love. That's why Aptera's taken the independent route. And now, this ELOC could finally give them the capital to finish what they started. If there's one thing Aptera has always done well, it's rallying people. They've raised more money through crowdfunding than nearly any other EV startup in history. Because this isn't just a company, it's a movement. People genuinely want this car to exist. They believe in solar mobility, in freedom from oil, from charging cables, from wasteful overproduction. That kind of passion can't be faked. And it's what's kept Aptera alive when others failed. Now, with the ELO C in place and public trading around the corner, both big and small investors can support Aptera in new ways. Even for those who just want the car, not the stock, this milestone means production is finally within reach. Unlike a traditional IPO, where banks and institutions dictate share prices, a direct listing allows Aptera's existing shareholders and crowdfunders to sell directly on the market. That's a big deal because, for the past five years, early supporters haven't been able to cash out. Now, they finally can. Of course, that means there might be early sell-offs, which could dip the share price temporarily, but that's normal. It's part of the growing pains of going from a private dream to a public company. The real story isn't the short-term stock price, it's the long-term potential. With funding access, Aptera can move on to tooling, sourcing, and assembly. The designs are done, testing is complete. Now it's about scaling manufacturing. Expect progress in casting and chassis development, solar improvements, supplier deals, and production scheduling. Each phase will be funded through this credit line, without a single billionaire dictating terms. This isn't just a win for one company. It's a message to the entire EV world. You don't need to be a billion-dollar-backed giant to innovate. You can build something groundbreaking with community, creativity, and belief in efficiency. If Aptera succeeds, it could redefine what a startup means in the automotive industry. They're not chasing luxury or speed. They're chasing efficiency, sustainability, and accessibility. Some people will never forgive Aptera for the delays. 
Some will keep doubting until the first delivery. That's fine. Skepticism is healthy. But I'm still rooting for them because what they're doing matters. If Rivian disappears, there are still electric trucks. If Lucid fails, there are other sedans. But if Aptera fails, that's it. The dream of a solar-powered car that can run on sunlight dies with it. That's why this $75 million deal isn't just about money. It's about momentum. It's about giving this idea a real shot at becoming part of our future. Imagine a car that gives you 20 to 40 miles of range per day, powered purely by the sun. No plugs, no waiting at chargers, no gas. Even if the real numbers are lower, the concept is still revolutionary. A car that earns its energy while you're parked. It's not just sustainable, it's empowering. At its core, Aptera represents independence. From oil, from charging networks, from unnecessary complexity. It's simple, elegant, and achievable. That's why, despite delays and doubt, so many people are still hopeful. This isn't about getting rich. It's about changing how we move. Will Aptera's $75 million Eloc solve everything? No, but it gives them what they've needed most. Financial runway and breathing room. It gives them time to finish, refine, and deliver. And it gives everyone who's believed in them something even more powerful. Hope that this vision is still alive. We're finally moving from prototypes to production, from dream to reality. And even if the road ahead is long and uncertain, one thing's for sure. Aptera isn't giving up, and neither should we. I don't know how high the stock will go or how long production will take, but I do know this $75 million EL Oak marks a turning point. It means Aptera now has the power to build, to deliver, and to prove that a solar car isn't a fantasy. It's the future. And if Aptera makes it, we all win.